did you think at all that it that it could spawn a, a franchise of three television series and four hundred movie uh, four hundred episodes? Never. Did it give you any Never. sense that it had legs? The storytelling no, uh, device, not 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 those kind of legs. No, right. I. I I had a feeling it was good enough to make, you know, part two, uh, but but I never anticipated that they'd ever make a hit television series of it. No. Wow. And so tell us the story of how you got involved in SG-1. Uh, I, I, my, my, uh, my, my then manager was called by Mary Jo Slater. That would mm -hmm. be the mother of Christian Slater, mm -hmm. right? And she was the casting director on the job on, on Stargate. And she said, you know, we'd like Jay to come down and read for this thing. And I, you know, they sent me up the, the sides, pages, and I looked at it and I said, yeah, I'll go in for this. This, this looks fun. Uh, looks, uh, you know, the beauty of, of, of uh, sci-fi is that uh, when you read it, when you read it, sometimes it can be, Sometimes it could be like, oh my God, this is this is far fetched. Yeah. You know, it's far fetched. But if you commit to it, if you make it part of your world, if you really commit to it, it make it real for everyone. And that that's the hard part of sci-fi, right? That's the really hard part of sci-fi. And I've grown to enjoy that 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 part of it, uh, where, where you read it and you go, how the hell is this going to work? And then, but but if you but if you bring it in internally, and then, you know, uh, make yourself part of that world, it, it it just works. And if the writing is good, of course, the writing has to be good. And in my case, with Jonathan and Brad, and the, they they did a great job. They did a great job. This was a character um, that John, I believe it was John Deal, played in the. Uh the the feature film did you go back and have a look at the feature film again before um... I, I did not i did i didn't do that no but okay. uh, is that probably wouldn't have been a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, well I, i'm curious about that you know i i intend to ask uh, people like tori higginson when she was replacing um uh, Jessica Steen for a role you know is that is that a personal acting choice to not examine someone else's work so that you have your own fresh I, I interpretation don't, i don't like to I don't like to, but I think, uh, you know, to each his own, um, especially I think in a case where you're replacing someone, I, I don't, I don't think it's good to, what you want is all the background and the history that, that has already occurred so that you have all that background and history and you can create a back life, um, uh, of things that have happened. But I, I don't think it's for me, it's not, it's not good to watch another actor and then try to copy it. It's it just doesn't work for me. So you did not audition for Children of the Gods. They offered it to you. Was Children of the Gods the pilot? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I auditioned for that. Oh, you did, okay. Oh yeah, no, okay. no, I had to go I had to go in and win that role. Yeah, okay. no, I auditioned for that. I got that and once I got the pilot, then we did the pilot and then the first episode after the pilot is called. That's called The Enemy Within. The enemy within. <laughs> now you're testing I didn't, me. I didn't have to audition for that. Well, no, time. right. We just rolled right into that. So that was that was kind of nice. Did you know when you auditioned for the pilot that they were going to knock you off in episode two? I knew I wasn't going to be part of the fire team. That that I knew, and they 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 were very honest with me up front. You know that uh, yeah the the scripts were already written, and it was written that that you know. Uh, Charlie Kowalski expires in the second episode or in the, you know, the episode after the uh, uh, pilot. So, um, and, and it was explained to me that, you know, we can't go back now because, and rewrite because, because uh, uh, it would mean getting network approval for all these other scripts. And they said, we're, we're just simply not going to do that. So were they considering a rewrite to, to make you a part of the fire? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, no, okay. I don't think so. No. Okay. I just, you know, it would it would have been nice, but you know, no. <laughs> uh, Enemy Within is such a wonderful. Uh, uh, it really is, in many respects, a part two to Children of the Gods, um, because we find out just how powerful these forces are, how powerful the the species is that takes over people, and we lose a cherished character real quickly. So it sets the stage for um, some real trouble. 
And that is largely attributed to your performance during that episode. It's really solid performance. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I, it, it's, it's one of the better episodes of television that has ever been written for me. And, and I appreciate you saying that. Thanks. Was it um, a struggle to be strapped to that table <laughs> for hours and hours a day? Well, I was strapped to it. I can tell you that. It strapped <laughs> me down pretty good. Um, as I remember, please, please help me remember because, yeah. you know, it's been a lot of years. Who directed that? Was that was that Mario as a party or was Who that directed the enemy within? No, it was the French guy. It was he, he was a French fella. Uh Let's see. very nice guy. Uh, Dennis Berry. Denny Denny, Berry? Den, Dennis Berry. Yeah. Denis Berry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did, no, he did a great job. He did a great job with that. And uh and uh, I, I I don't know whether they ever had him back. Did they ever have him, have him back again? Did he direct more episodes? Really easy. I have to, no idea. Really easy to check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they he came back. He was he was right there for First Commandment in in the first season of the show as well. He did he did two. So yeah. what was it like acting with the great Don S. Davis? Miss Don, Miss Don. He he was um, he was a prankster, a joker, and when when the director said action he was all business and he never missed a beat i gotta tell you the guy was a solid solid as a rock actor just terrific but you know off camera when the cameras are at rest and and everybody we're in between scenes i'd say that he and chris judge were some of the funniest people i've ever worked with in my life <laughs> They, they are definitely pranksters and fun and fun to be with. Yeah. You, um, I, I, I was on the phone with you about two or three years ago. This is after we had shot for, for dialing home and I was contacting you about, oh, I think for like approvals for, for a clip or something. Okay. And you asked me, are you still, um, are you still in touch with Chris? And I said, yes. And you said, please tell him I love him. And I, you know, that really, that really struck a chord with me, how close all of you were. And how, you know, that's just not the case for every film and, and, and TV set. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's not, it's not the case for most things. Uh, look, I had a great time, you know, between Richard and Michael and Amanda and, and just everybody, Christopher, they were all just lovely people. And we, um, you know, we suffered the, what is it called? The GVRD together, which is um, Greater Vancouver it's, it's, Regional Dist it's, Recreational it's, District. It's, yeah, that huge area with pouring rain, freezing cold days, and we were all. Um, I don't want to say miserable, but I, I do. I, I will say miserable. They were, they were miserable <laughs> times. Oh my because, god! You know, you're, you're soaked through. Your your clothes are just soaked through, and you're cold. And somehow, some way, we we uh, we managed to laugh about it and just uh, carry on. And uh, they're they're great people. And uh, I still speak to every. Well, I don't speak to Richard that much. I see Richard once in a great while at uh, uh, at a con or something. But um, uh, Christopher, I still speak to on the phone, and sometimes Michael, uh, Amanda, I haven't uh, Amanda. I see it, things at different events and things like that, and I see she's doing extremely well and better than ever all of her uh her 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 good stuff that's happening to her she's a lovely woman it's she is doing exactly what she always wanted to do she always wanted to be a director and now as far as i am aware she is she is the one of the most sought after uh directors in in canada so isn't that nice and isn't it, that nice it couldn't happen to a better person You're you right. know to a nicer yeah. person and yeah she's She's given off good vibes. Everyone that I hear that's talked with her has said they have nothing to complain about with her work. She is she is fantastic. She, she's pretty doggone easy to work with. I got to tell you, she's just <laughs> she's she's up for for she's up for everything all the time. You know, she's just fun. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.